and one spoon speaks and in this BNF bite size style video I will be covering eczema, what are the different types of eczema, how it can be managed and what treatment options are available. So I hope that you like this video and if you do don't forget to hit that like button, share and also subscribe. So when you think of the word eczema, the word dermatitis may spring to mind, derm referring to skin and itis referring to inflammation. Examples of different types of eczemas include atopic, allergic contact, venous slash varicose and discoid. So atopic eczema is the most common form of eczema. Skin can become quite sore, itchy, dry, cracked and it can vary from person to person. Some people may have small areas of dry skin, others may have more widespread inflammation. Inflamed skin can appear to be red on lighter skin or purple, dark brown or grey on darker skin. It tends to affect the flexures, so inside of the elbows and the backs of the knees, as well as the hands, face and scalp. It tends to be more common in children and is usually a chronic condition, although in some cases it can improve tremendously or even completely as the child gets older. So with atopic eczema, the skin can become infected and lynchified. Lynchification happens because of constant scratching or rubbing in the area. With those with eczema often develop other conditions such as asthma and hay fever. Hold up a minute, if you're after hundreds of questions on every chapter in the BNF, including over-the-counter type scenarios, then make sure to check out Clinical Quizical. I'll include the link in the description box below along with a link to a demo video, so go check it out. Now we're going to focus on contact dermatitis. So similar to atopic eczema, it can appear red on lighter skin or purple, dark brown or grey on darker skin. It can be itchy, dry, cracked and blistered. And as the name suggests, it develops due to contact with an irritant or allergen and can affect any part of the body, but in, in particular the hands and the face. Cleaning the skin, using gloves, establishing what the irritant could be and avoiding it are all ways to prevent contact dermatitis. Looking briefly at discoid eczema, think of the word disc, it's literally in the name, and that's a handy way of, remem handy way of remembering how it appears on skin. So it's in a circular oval type shape. It usually starts as small spots and bumps, which then join together to form a larger patch. On lighter skin, it tends to look red slash pink, and on darker skin, it can appear dark brown or even be paler than the surrounding skin. There are sometimes additional symptoms such as pain, tight skin, and even discolor discoloration of the skin. With venous eczema or varicose eczema, as it can also be known, it's a common condition in those that have varicose veins. It affects the lower legs, don't know why I'm pointing at my lower legs because you can't see them, but it affects the lower legs and it's a long-term condition. It can cause itching, swelling, drying and scaling of skin. Again, similar to the other types of eczemas that we've already discussed, it can appear red or brown on um, lighter skin or purple, dark brown or grey on darker skin. So thinking more broadly, how can eczema be managed? Well, if eczema is caused by an irritant or allergens, then avoiding those where possible is a start. Emollients should be used liberally on dry, itchy skin. Which option of emollient depends on a number of factors, such as patient prefer preference and how dry the skin is. Bath or shower emollients can also be recommended. Emollients can actually increase the efficacy of topical corticosteroids. A really important counselling point for anyone using emollients is to make sure that patients and their carers are aware that residue of emollients can build up on clothing and bedding and that this can be a fire risk. This applies to both paraffin and non-paraffin containing emollients. So for anyone using emollients, um, smoking or going near naked flames would pose a risk because skin that has been in contact with emollients, clothing and bedding can rapidly ignite. Washing clothes up and bedding at high temperature may help to an extent, um, but it won't totally remove emollient buildup. So we mentioned corticosteroids. So topical corticosteroids and the potency of what topical corticosteroid will, can be used with regards to eczema will depend on the severity of eczema as well as the site. So for example, if an individual has eczema on the face, on the armpits or the genitals, then a mild corticosteroid should be used. Moderate corticosteroids should only be used when necessary. So for example, on the scalp, arms, 
the legs and the trunk, a moderate to potent corticosteroid may be required. Emollient therapy should continue during treatment with topical corticosteroids. So let's think of a few examples of mild topical corticosteroids. So they include hydrocortisone, 0.1 to 2.5%, diodem, maldisone. Examples of moderate corticosteroids is Umavate or Betnovate RD. And examples of potent include Betnovate, Diprazone, Elecon, and hydrocortisone butyrate. Second line treatment options include topical picrolemus, don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, which can be used for mild to moderate atopic eczema, and topical tacrolimus can be used for moderate to severe atopic eczema. Treatment of atopic eczema with either of these should be initiated by a specialist. So I hope that you liked this video and feel more confident on the different types of eczema. And if you did like it, as mentioned before, please do like, share and subscribe. And also check out my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, where I do post more pharmacy related topic. So until next time, thank you for watching and happy revisings. Thank you.